Hi, I'm Laura Chandler, host of the Sacred Stream Radio podcast, and I'm very happy to welcome back to the show author, archetypal consultant, and neo-Vedic astrologer, Hogarth Brown. Hogarth is host of a popular YouTube channel, Hogarth's Global Astrology, where he offers astrological insights into global politics, events, historical, and contemporary figures. And he's here today to talk about the upcoming eclipses and their implications for this year and beyond. We also discuss the banking and financial crisis, the future of the U.S., the latest with China, Ukraine, and even the coronation of King Charles. Hogarth is always insightful and a lot of fun, so join me for this riveting episode. He's back. Hogarth Brown of Hogarth's Global Astrology is back to talk to us about all things Vedic astrology, especially the eclipses coming up. How are you, Hogarth? Hello. Uh, hello, Laura. And thanks so much uh, for having me back. Uh, I really appreciate it. It's, it's great to be back. It's been, it's been a little while and a yeah. lot has happened uh, since then. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to be back. And I'll try and explain things as clearly as I can, because I understand there'll be a lot of people listening in as well. So I'll try and be as descriptive with my language as I can if you're not <laughs> watching visually. <laughs> yes, yes. And for those who are listening, you can tune in visually on the YouTube channel at Sacred Stream YouTube channel. And of course, Hogarth has his popular YouTube channel, Hogarth's Global Astrology. So you want to check him out there. Um, well, last time you were here, we were talking about the eclipses around the midterms, which was kind of wild. Woo! And now we're here heading into eclipse season and a there's a lot going on with the planets, which you're going to explain to us. And I can just tell you, I've been feeling it. I've, I have been, I don't know what's going on with Neptune, but for at least the past five days, it's, I have been Neptunian. So we'll just, wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. So, so please, wherever you want to start, what's, what's happening in the, in the okay. What, what's happening? And I'm, I'm, I'm what you're describing is is very apt. So just for those of you that uh, may or may not be familiar, I am a, a neo-Vedic astrologer. What does that mean? So I do sidereal Vedic astrology and Vedic astrology or Jyotish as it's known is over 5,000 years old, but they don't include the outer planets. I also, and this is what makes me a neo-Vedic astrologer, I include um, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, Ceres and Chiron. Why do I do that? Because I found they're just too important to leave out because the outer planets deal with the very intriguing and often unusual stuff that happens in our lives. So when I'm doing consultations with a person, it is very often Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, Ceres, Chiron give that those extra flavors. They really are the riddle solvers, shall we say, or, you know, when interesting things happen in our lives. So what's going on? Now, in, tra in traditional tropical astrology, which many of you will, of course, know, they are 24 degrees ahead of the actual physical placement of the planet. So let's just say Western tropical astrology still works. A talented astrologer is a talented astrologer. They can pretty much arrive at the same place. But let's just say it's more anticipatory. Yeah, it's more anticipatory because they're looking at the earlier placement. In Vedic astrology, it deals with the body of the planet, the physical body. And that is what gives the tangible results here on planet Earth. So just to cover a bit of a, a bit of former ground, as you know, um, I, I predicted that there would be an insurrection or some kind of coup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Based on the movements of Pluto, a certain someone's chart, etc. All of that stuff. <laughs> but to give it to give you an idea, Pluto entered sidereal Capricorn now in 2021. Now, what's Capricorn all about? This all makes sense. It's about government, distribution systems, infrastructure of all kinds. It also deals with uh, like big companies, 
uh, monopolies, top-down structures. Now, if we look here, you you probably be aware already, aren't you, Laura, that um, the USA is currently having a Pluto return. Oh, yes. Okay. Have you heard about this on other channels and stuff like that? Or, you know, just... I've heard from you about the Pluto return. Mm -hmm. There's some other okay. people talking about it too, but it's it's quite the thing in Vedic astrology in particular. <laughs> yeah, this is mahusive. Yeah, massive is not even the right word. <laughs> mahusive. Why? Because the United States is the only country, as far as I'm aware, on Earth going through this at the moment. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, why is this important? What and why is uh, effectively the United States only the nation on the nation on earth that's going through this right now it doesn't mean other nations haven't have had it but it takes Pluto about 248 years uh, for well 244 or 48 years to make a full revolution around the sun because he's got a wobbly orbit mm -hmm. so what's Pluto Pluto deals with the underworld yeah Pluto deals with the shadow. Mm. Pluto deals with all of the difficult things that we want to sweep under the carpet. Pluto can deal with some of the worst of what humanity is capable of, unfortunately. There is a good side, which is transformation, alchemy, mea culpa, transcendence, X-Men powers. Mm -hmm. But we have to do that work first. So America, because America is coming up to what? Being about... 250 years old now, yeah? <clears throat> Pluto is making its return. Mm -hmm. One of the shadow aspects of Pluto is the far right and fascism. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Haven't we been seeing an awful lot of that going on? Yeah? <clears throat> That's right. Where's it happening? Capricorn, the sign of government. Mm -hmm. Now this happened, Pluto's body, his physical body, entered sidereal Capricorn on the 1st of January, 2021. Mm -hmm. Now, can anyone, uh, could you tell me what happened five days later? <laughs> exactly, insurrection. Right. Yeah. And I even say in the video, <clears throat> you, if anyone's interested, they can look on my channel. It's, mm -hmm. it's very modestly titled. There's a playlist saying, I predicted the insurrection. You know, <laughs> 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 and you know what is even uncanny? I looked back recently at this video. You know what's really uncanny? I said something crazy is going to happen at the Capitol. Mm -hmm. It's going to be some kind of violence, some kind of extraordinary overthrow. And I even said something poopy may happen. That's right. Yeah. And the reason why I said that is because Pluto was passing through the tail of the flying gripe. Right. For those of you who want to know, it's a, it's a constellation. It's like an eagle. But on a, on a bird, there are certain things to avoid. The beak, yeah, <laughs> the claws, and of course, the other bit, yeah. Right. And so I said, something poopy will happen at the cap capital. What did they do? We all know what they did, yeah, right. what they put on the walls. That's right. So that, that was when Pluto's physical body entered sidereal Capricorn according to sidereal astrology in Western astrology they said it was 2008 mm -hmm. yeah so they said the financial crash was caused by Pluto actually it was Jupiter debilitated in sidereal Capricorn that mm. really caused that crash anyway interesting, interesting. so what we're seeing is, <clears throat> and I'll get back to the eclipses very soon, mm -hmm. and you can see here, for those of you that might may, may be listening, I'm gesturing to my um, astrological chart that I always whip out for the United States. So this is the, <laughs> it's the chart of the Declaration of Independence. Now, we know, of course, those that are very detailed with their history will say, yes, but there's many thingy-bijigs, and such and such wasn't signed until you know, whatever. However, the chart of 1776, July 4th, 6.30 p.m. Philadelphia is where America be existed as a concept and can be really seen as the birth of the nation. And it works superbly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is where this Pluto return is happening. 
So what we're seeing, shadow in government, all sorts of shadow agendas. What are we finding out? Lots of stuff about what? Companies, all of these monopolies. Pluto is like a hand grenade, yeah? He brings every, dredges everything up from the deep. Look mm. at all these chemical spills, mm. all of this stuff that we're discovering. It's, it's like this composting process, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What have you noticed, Laura, that has intensified in the last few years for you? Oh, for me personally? Um, Can it be personal or just general? Oh, well, gosh. Kind of you know, I, I mean, I'm thinking as you're talking about Pluto and this, this kind of thing, I'm thinking, oh, the Ohio train derailment. I'm thinking of the, the plume of algae that's hitting Florida right now. And, you know, I, I think that, and it just seems like the whole COVID thing, um, that period of time has been um, really a deep dive for a lot of folks in many ways. I mean, now we're getting new information about where it may have come from, but mm -hmm. even just being in that, so much, um, so many shenanigans were happening, you know, about how, you know, misinformation and all of this kind of thing. So we've really been in this, this state of, um, uh, it's almost like chaos <laughs> in a way, you know, so yeah. that, that's my initial take. Yeah. And these things are <clears throat> very Plutonian because Pluto, mm -hmm. Pluto deals with manipulation, with control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It deals with power agendas and stuff like that. Now, what I want to say is, because I don't want it to seem all bad, Pluto has some wonderful qualities as well. Mm -hmm. So my analogy, when I'm talking to my clients, I describe uh, the planets in certain ways. First of all, I say planets are people. So literally when I'm looking at a person's chart, when I look at certain planets, it represents people in their life. The obvious one is mother and father. Yeah, moon is mother, sun is father, literally represents the, the father's body. Jupiter can represent um, uh, the spouse uh, or, you know, uh, the husband in a woman's chart, so to speak. But it means all of the, the men, significant men in a person's life. Mars represents siblings, but brothers in particular. Venus is sisters, you know, all of this stuff, yeah? So going back to the, the USA chart, mm -hmm. Pluto is all about the intensity. It's about shadow. And their planets are like radio stations and they broadcast their lowest frequencies to highest frequencies mm -hmm. simultaneously, yeah? At the level we interact with those energies does depend to a certain extent on our previous karmas, but also our level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. What, when it comes to Pluto, because he deals with power, most of those in power do what? They pick the low hanging fruit or even the fruit that's rotting on the floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pluto deals with composting as well. Uh, things being destroyed and then being reborn as something else. It's so often it can feel like when the Pluto return is happening, that everything is what? Falling apart. Mm -hmm. This is also deals with dark night of the soul energy as well. I think we can all agree. I think America is going through a bit of a dark night of the soul. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This, of course, is happening all around the world because these energies are happening in Capricorn, which is government. So what are we seeing? Governments all around the world, these shadow agendas moving to the right. Have you noticed this country, that country, even Sweden, yeah, moving <laughs> to the right. Yeah. Look what's happening in certain places, Middle East. But the reason why it's so pronounced and <laughs> so extreme in the USA is because of this timeline of Pluto coming back. Mm -hmm. Every country of a certain age that is reaching around about 250 years old, which is very young, by the way, yeah. has to go through this process. So America is going through its first primordial, intense, and almost Persephone process. Because remember, Persephone was abducted by Pluto. Mm. And it was Ceres, her mother, mm -hmm. or... Demeter, as she's known, the original Greek goddess, that had to try and get her back. 
Right. So this is why I always look at Ceres in the person's chart, because Ceres talks about Persephone, um, Demeter, and Hades, or Pluto. Mm. So really what's happening is America is having its Persephone a moment. Isn't it interesting, this attack on women's rights, speech, oh, yeah. et cetera, all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. So this draws me neatly back to the eclipses. So I just want everyone to draw our minds back to last year, yeah? Which is not that long ago. <laughs> now, what happens is this, <laughs> when you get the new eclipse season, mm -hmm. it will flavor the whole year. So just for those that may be listening, I'm gesturing to, to the USA chart. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm dem showing here to Laura is that the planets here, which I've got the transiting planets here on tracing paper. On this chart, they are moving clockwise. Yeah, moving clockwise. But the nodes of the moon always move in the opposite direction to the planets. Yeah, they're always retrograde. If you're using an anti-clockwise chart, they'll go clockwise. If you use a clockwise chart, they'll go anti-clockwise. So the nodes of the moon are always are moving backwards, shall we say. They spend 18 months in one sign. So that means we get uh, over a period of 18 months, we get the eclipses happening in one sign. Right. Last year, the nodes of the moon were in Aries, yeah, sidereal Aries, and they were happening in a section of the sky, which is called Barini Nakshatra. So for those who are unf unfamiliar, in Vedic astrology, there are 27 nakshatras, which are asterism star clusters. Each sign is made up of essentially three energetic factors. In the West, we just have one. Now, this is really important. So April 30th, 2022 the solar eclipse the first solar eclipse of the year happened now the sun deals with leaders presidents government as well authority figures it happened in the nakshatra barony which sits in the middle of aries mm. and the symbolism of the nakshatra is also very important as well Mm -hmm. Each nakshatra has its own symbol. The symbol for Barony nakshatra is the yoni, mm. which is the female reproductive system. What happened two days later? Yeah. Wow. So are we talking the attack on Roe v. Wade? Mm -hmm. the week? Yep. The wow. eclipse happened on April 30th. Two days later, it was leaked that the justices, an authority figure, the mm -hmm. sun, was going to overturn Roe versus Wade. What eclipses do? They bring things out of the dark that we mm -hmm. didn't know before. Sometimes they can be wonderful, but they're very unpredictable, shocking. Mm -hmm. And we all now know how important the yoni, the female reproductive system, was for the whole of 2022. Mm -hmm. Yeah. culminating in that lunar eclipse which happened exactly on the day of the midterms right yeah which was the full culmination of that thing yeah mm -hmm. and that actually helped they say stop you know the so-called red wave i mean now we've got a different red wave that which right. is which is happening a real one yeah right. <laughs> <Word> <laughs> <out. laughs> you know, this is a real red, red wave as opposed to you know <laughs> An illusory one, and we'll talk about yeah. that when we come to Neptune, but okay. that gives you an idea that sets the context. So we're about to start the new eclipse season. It's still happening in Aries, but of course the nodes have been slowly moving backwards. So now it's actually going from Barony, which is in the middle of Aries, and it's going to be in Ashwini, mm. which is the first nakshatra of the zodiac. Barony is the second, but because they move backwards, the number starts higher, goes to lower. Now, what's Ashwini all about? Ashwini, uh, the deities here are the Ashwins, the Kumar twins. Mm -hmm. They are known as the physicians of the gods, and they deal particularly with eyesight. Mm. Yeah, They also deal with beauty. They also deal with beauty. They deal with speed and things moving forward at great 
pace. The symbolism of this nakshatra is horses. So we may even have some horse stories, either some race horse does something extraordinary or some <laughs> race horse dies or, yes. you know, something to do with also deals with vehicles and horsepower as well. Right. You know, think if you think about it, horses mm -hmm. have been vehicle. Well, we know what I mean. They pull carriages and Transport, all that kind of yeah. stuff. Transport. Mm -hmm. But what this also means is because these are eclipses, and it deals with physicians of the gods. Mm -hmm. We're going to learn lots of new stuff that we didn't know before in regards mm. to physicians and medicine. Mm. Mm -hmm. All things to do with so scientists, researchers, mm -hmm. physicians, look, people who work in laboratories, yeah? Ashwini, the Ashwins, physicians wow. to the gods. It's an eclipse. Things coming out of the dark that we didn't necessarily know before. Let me ask. So when you talk about this, so we could be hearing more about origins of COVID or getting some progress and vaccines or whatever it is but also possibly other information or progress? Would we see progress in um, medicines generally? Is that something you're thinking or what are you thinking? I would say it would be all of those things. Okay. Some of the things are going to be scandalous. Yeah, okay. so just get ready, yeah? Okay. <laughs> and you know, uh, th th one of these things, you have to be very patient as an astrologer, you know, yeah. because you have to wait for the world to catch up because we can see just years in advance anyways, right. but I'm keeping my lips tied for now, yes. but some some of it will be potentially scandalous. Look, look, it's happening already. Look, more and more people are beginning to what? Say that the lab leak theory is, is look, for entertainment purposes mm -hmm. only, but this is now in mainstream news. Mm -hmm that is looking more and more plausible. I already know what the reality of the situation mm -hmm. is, but I have to wait for the world to catch up before mm -hmm. I can be that explicit. So we're, see, we're seeing that, but this could also lead to breakthroughs as well, innovation in regards to medicine as mm -hmm. well. So, you know, you're going to see there might be new breakthroughs in regards to the treatment of cancer, et cetera, or mm -hmm. things like that. Or we may just actually find out really simple stuff that, you know, things like vitamin D or whatnot and stuff like the stuff that's really simple, that's yep. been around for ages, yep. could actually be a lot more powerful and potent and effective than a lot of these, so we say, more commercialized things, mm. shall we say? Yeah, right, right. So all of us are going to be reflecting on our health and healing. But mm. also as well, it means things are going to speed up. Aries, after all, is a sign that is associated with war and conflict. Mm. Yeah. But could it be that we see a big conflict on Earth come to end, come to an end? I've spoken a lot about how the charts of the USA, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris and Xi Jinping are now all activated. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, haven't we noticed something very interesting how um, China recently has brokered a deal between Saudi Arabia and Iran. Now, who thought that could happen? <laughs> now, that's been a warring situation for decades. Right. At least superficially brought to an end. Could they do the same again? Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at either something kind of rapidly coming to an end or maybe even potentially escalating. We'll have to see the eclipses will reveal what they reveal once they happen. Mm -hmm. But we are now in this new window because it happens a month before the eclipses happen. Mm -hmm. And the eclipses happen on the 20th of April. Mm -hmm. Today is the 20th of March. Mm -hmm. And a certain someone, I think, was saying, uh, as I refer to as Duck LaRange, um, uh, has, has Trump been arrested today or is it just a, a bit of flim flam? Well, the anticipation, actually, what he himself said is it would be tomorrow. So I was thinking, oh, I wish I'd had you on later this week. So we would we would hit that. But we'll hit it anyway. And um, so we'll see what happens this week. But, you know, there's multiple potential um, indictments coming so with the variety of things that he's uh, being investigated for so but tomorrow was said to be the day so we'll uh, we'll email <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> and of course, this will air afterwards, so people will know. Uh, but oh, what, do you, what do you think? Well, what I find is really interesting. Now, as you know, I'm a Neo-Vedic astrologer, so we're, we're looking at the bodies of the planets. Mm -hmm. And once upon a time, about 18 months ago, I made a video where I looked at uh, Trump, Dr. Lorange, and Melania and their chart together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I said at the time, and I got a little bit of a roasting at the time, I said, guys, I'm not seeing anything significant happen to Duck Lorange until 2023. Mm. Yeah. And I said, October in particular. And people were like, what? No, he's going down. Why are you saying this? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And of course, I just throw my hands up and I just have to bide my time and be patient. Right. And has it not borne out thus? Yeah. <laughs> has it right. not borne out thus? Yes, Everyone's yes. like, he's blah, blah, this, that's going to happen. Yeah. And I had a very profound dream about, about, about Trump in um, summer of 2022, where mm. I saw it, his, his whole empire, everything collapsing, like yeah. Mar-a-Lago basically going under the ocean, the sea, this, that, and the other. And it, basically everything in that dream came true. Mm. Uh, there was a brunette and a blonde, and I realized that was Cassidy Hutchison, and the other one was, um, oh goodness, Sarah Matthews, I think her, I think mm. her name is. Uh, and then soon afterwards, he got, uh, you know, there was the search by the FBI, et cetera, right. et cetera. So I could see his trajectory was changing. Mm -hmm. What's happening now is this is all building up, but what I've been saying is we won't see the first wheels properly fly off until the 22nd of October mm. 2023 okay that's when Dr. Lorange Trump goes into his um Jupiter K2 oh K2 is the south node of the moon known to spiritualize mm -hmm. yeah but it can spiritualize via loss right yeah? the way I was able to anticipate Trump sort of losing his mind was when the eclipse fell exactly on his moon, which is the mind, mm -hmm. which is also with his K2. And that happened in November. It, it happened in um, November 2020. Yeah, it was a, it was right. a, it was around the, the, the election time. Obviously, you know, Biden won, et cetera, and all that kind of stuff. But I knew that he was mm -hmm. going to go off the rails from that point, And he did. Right. So K2 is going to become activated in his chart. Now, does it mean uh, oblivion and ruin for Duck Lorange? We have to see. It depends. The nodes are very unpredictable. My thing is it could be house arrest or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or it could be a spectacular implosion. Mm -hmm. Or K2 could, in his fickle nature, decide to reward him in some way mm. i mean my thing would be this look if if i if he came to me for a consultation i'd be like listen dude run yeah <laughs> run <laughs> leave get out why you've, <laughs> why you've got your passport <laughs> why you've got your passport because k2 is like a vortex oh. yeah it's like a whirlpool yeah so and it's not it's not friendly with the moon so yeah. That would be my advice for Dr. Doc Lorange, but there you go. Anyway, that's great. That's great. Well, you know, we, you're, you're hit, you hit upon some, some with, um, chi and, and what's, mm -hmm. what's going to happen. Um, I mean the Ukraine, I'm very curious about what's going to happen with Ukraine. He's been there. He's been, um, you know, he's really kind of brokering deals all over the place. He's meeting with Putin so, you know, A, I'm wondering what's going to go on, what you think is going on with him personally, and um, how it's going to impact the world. Um, and also, what do you think is going to happen with Ukraine and this, this battle that we are really wanting to see end? Mm -hmm. Well, what I want to say is this, is that what's happening on, because uh, you can imagine that for us uh, 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 as astrologers or something I certainly like to look at, we have to take the helicopter view. Mm -hmm. We have to take our emotions out of it. 
And we need to, well, at least what I like to uh, try to do is look at the tectonic shifts that are happening because we are having huge transfers of power at the moment because uh, Pluto deals with what? Power. He's in the sign of Capricorn, which is government, not just the US government. Right. Yeah, but you guys are literally having the Pluto return. So this is literally America kind of in labor pains, really, to be yeah. honest. It's, it's right. really, it's, it's akin to something like that. And we all know labors, once it starts, it's irreversible. You just gotta go through the process, yeah? Right. Mm -hmm. or you know or have a c-section or something like that or an epidural but you know what i mean but the, the whole point is it's 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 that Still process yeah. yeah china as a nation has over five thousand years of recorded history mm -hmm. yeah as a nation they've had multiple multiple pluto returns even the UK, you know, if you think, for example, of Westminster Abbey is a thousand years old. So we've had four Pluto returns at least since that point, And that's not even going back to, you know, whatever. Right. So what's happening is that China is just coming out of a very important factor, which is known as Sadi Sati. Mm -hmm in Vedic astrology and it's it's known as seven years of trials but it's more sophisticated than that basically it happens when Saturn and I'm demonstrating here on, on the board where Saturn is one sign from the moon so here's the moon in the USA chart in sidereal Aquarius yeah with the moon and then a sign after the moon but it depends if there's planets if there's planets beforehand it is it's, it intensifies the most intense is when Saturn's with the moon and any planets after. So the moon in China's chart is in sidereal Capricorn. Mm. Saturn has just changed signs. Saturn changed signs on January 17th, 2023. And if anyone's interested, I, I did this video, which is called Saturn's Accountability. And I said all things to do with... Um, Things that go through the air, outer space, science, technology, um, changing modus operandi of governments, etc. Man critis, critique for man-made things and all of this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. What happens? Saturn changed science. And then a few days later, we had what? The Chinese space balloon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Right. Literally, like a matter of days, Saturn change signs. So all things to do with the air, aviation, that kind of stuff. Wow. Yeah. 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 It's all there. I really encourage people to yeah. ha have, have a look at that video because a lot of the stuff that I said there is coming true already. Oh, yeah. Everyone really go to Hogarth's channel. There's so and there's so much there. So scroll through and and um, y you'll you'll find it all there. But it's some fascinating stuff. You know? Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. So if we imagine here, so here in the USA chart, Pluto and K2, which is really quite a bombastic combination, are in sidereal Capricorn. And this is where mm -hmm. the Pluto return is happening, as I said. Mm -hmm. But China has their moon there natally. Mm -hmm. Now, Saturn spends about two and a half years in each sign. But it ends up being three years all in by the time he's direct, retrograde, direct, you know, etc. Now think about it. Saturn and the moon are not friends. So when Saturn is one sign from the moon with the moon and one sign after, he puts a lot of pressure on the moon. The moon deals with the mind, the emotions, how we get our needs met, and it deals with the public. Saturn is the planet of what? Restriction. Yeah. Rules, discipline, planet of government. Mm -hmm. This is also why in China's chart, there is this, this kind of persistent kind of dogma, as it were, because their moon is actually in the sign of Capricorn. Interesting. It also means while Saturn was in sidereal Capricorn, they were going through peak sadi sati, mm -hmm. maximum pressure. China had what? The deepest, longest lockdowns out of anyone on planet Earth. Right. Yeah, they were pretty much mm -hmm. locked up for three contig contiguous years, pretty much. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Now they're actually having some of the suffering, some of the repercussions of that, because of course you can't close down your economy for three years, even if your economy is as big as China's without some re- ramifications, yeah? Right. Which is what domestic issues and stuff like that, people were beginning to protest because the laws were so strict that there was a fire in a tower block and no one was let out. And a lot of people sadly died. Right. Yeah? Do you right. see, it's too draconian, mm-hmm. yeah? Mm-hmm. Obviously, you know, China didn't invent dictatorship and we're talking about the the regime here. This is, Mm. it's an archetype, as it were. These things were archetypes, they're archetypes. So they are now just coming out of that sadi sati, that pressure, because Mm -hmm. Saturn has changed signs and now Saturn is in sidereal Aquarius. But guess what? That's hitting the moon of the United States. Interesting. Mm. very interesting yeah so what's happening america is having a pluto return and sadi sati concurrently <laughs> at the same time okay starts to make sense now isn't it why things are so intense we did we did a story uh, uh we looked at uh, on my sh- show hogley show uh, that I have every uh, Saturday, we looked at the situation in South Carolina mm-hmm. where 21 Republican uh, lawmakers or what have you yeah. put forward the idea that women, any woman that who has a termination deserves the death penalty. Yep. yep. Like, I mean, we're talking about stuff that would make the Taliban blush. Yeah. Not even they yeah. are talking about stuff like this. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Honestly, I think some of the Taliban are just like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Right. Honestly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you see those cat videos and the cat's astonished like that. Yeah. <laughs> it, honestly, I've like, if we just try and digest yeah. Now, thankfully, that law didn't go through, but let's digest what they were actually saying. And this was 21 of them. They're mm-hmm. saying if a woman has a termination for whatever reason, no matter what's happened to her, mm-hmm. she deserves the death penalty. Like, oh, come on. Do you see Pluto, the shadow of Pluto? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Government, yeah? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, let me ask you, because when you bring up Saturn, you bring up Pluto. You know, I think we're in a, you know, we're, we're hearing rumblings of financial crisis, of banking crisis, which I, I'm imagining is quite related to Saturn at the very least. Mm-hmm. And um, what are you seeing in, in that short term and long term? What are your thoughts? Oh, well, what I'll do is I, I realized that, that I didn't fully answer your question um, beforehand. So we'll talk uh, banking. But I'll go back to what you said about Xi. Yes. And what's happening with Xi or China? If you want to know what's where a nation is going, you can always look at the leader's chart. Mm-hmm. That's why I've been making all these videos. And like I said, look, this significant stuff's going to happen. China knows it's in a bit of a pickle mm-hmm. when the, not necessarily the eclipses, but remember I was talking about the eclipses, the Ashwins, the physicians of the gods things to do with medicine, healing and stuff being more and more prominent in the news and something coming out that we didn't know before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So obviously part of that lab leak theory, which is now gaining more credence is part of that, but there'll be more. However, Xi is looking at the bigger picture. It is well known that China will at some point be the dominant superpower in the world. Mm -hmm. And I think a penny has dropped Mm -hmm. because there are many domestic problems in China, particularly with the real estate and all of that stuff. Too long to go into, but it's a huge problem. I mean, we're talking like masses of abandoned ghost cities to the tune of that could house 60 million people. I'm not joking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is approximately the population of Germany. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they've got massive things going on like that. However, what we're seeing is China is going through a constructed restructuring, shall we say, of their image on the world stage. 
as peacemaker. Yeah, mm. peacemaker. This mm -hmm. is what I believe. I really do. Mm -hmm. And I've been seeing it brewing. We've now had peace as far as we're aware between Saudi Arabia and Iran. This was inconceivable. Yeah, this was in this is really something to pull off. Yeah. What I would say is this. If if Xi is able to broker peace between Russia and Ukraine, that is going to significantly enhance the status of China. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just will. Yeah, yep. and I'm not saying I'm pro China or against no. China, whatever. We're talking yep. energy and just real politic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, what I see in the chart, this is part of a strategic positioning to improve China's image. Yeah, because mm -hmm. there's there's been the murmurings around ta Taiwan. But no one's allowed to talk about the Uyghur anymore. And I'll say entertainment purposes only, because sometimes certain things can get, you know, edited, shall we say. Mm -hmm. um, they need good stories. Yeah. Xi needs good stories. He knows his people are not satisfied with him. Right. So instead of warmongering, yeah, mm -hmm. which is we see too much of in the world, maybe he's putting forward peace because there's that simple adage, I'm sure you've heard of it, which is that you catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. Mm -hmm. Yep. Interesting. Interesting. And I want to add this. In addition to this being the peacemaker and the the broker, as you will, you know, and gaining, um, you know, good press. If, if he goes into Ukraine and the war is able to resolve, he, he's going to be able to negotiate contracts for rebuilding Ukraine. And so there's a, quite a big money incentive there. And, you know, that, that will change things quite a bit. Absolutely. This is very high stakes. Yeah. And I'm so I'm so glad I'm so glad that 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 you mentioned that because this is this is um what I've been what I've been looking at and some other readers have been looking at as well. If Xi is able to bring or the, the regime of China is mm -hmm. able to bring broker a deal of peace mm -hmm. between Russia and Ukraine, it is a game changer on the yeah. world stage. Yep. It just is. The yep. geopolitics will shift. Yep. Everyone knows that that China would like the yuan to be the reserve currency. At the moment, of course, we know it's the dollar. Right. But look at the kind of cray cray. Uh, I won't use bad language, but look, <laughs> shall we say certain the the people that are currently in the house? Yeah. Mm -hmm. at the moment. <laughs> Flirting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Flirting. And this ties yeah. in uh, with, with the banking stuff, flirting mm -hmm. with potentially playing around with the debt ceiling. Mm. Right. Right. Is this it's not a good idea at the best of times, but mm -hmm. is this really a time to be kind of playing around with that kind of stuff where we're seeing tremors in the banking system? Right. Technically, I think the debt ceiling has to be raised by May. Or the USA will default. Mm -hmm. What's that going to do? Of, right. of course, you know. To right. uh, and then, and then imagine, say the eclipses bring out. She stands. It wouldn't surprise me at all. It wouldn't surprise me at all. In this next month, before you know it, she is standing there in between. Well, maybe not between Putin and and Zelensky, but. Yep brokering some kind of peace or quasi or mm -hmm. fudge or something even if it's just that they're not the bombings aren't happening anymore mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. even that would be something and this would also be in that kind of timeline where you've got your marjorie taylor greens and you've got your george santos <laughs> and you've got your you know you've got your mccarthy's or whatever yeah. raising merry hell and mm -hmm. michigas mm -hmm. with with Imagine if that if they were to instigate an American default just at the time when when China is rising up and China's going to be like, well, we have the yuan. Yeah. <laughs> right. right, right, right. You see, like yeah. I'm letting you into my astrologer mind here. I hope this doesn't yeah. stick you out too much. No, folks, no, no, no. Yeah. You know what I mean, because no. it's I have to join the dots. I have to yeah. look at the energy and the motives. Mm -hmm. What is going on? The tectonics, 
what is actually shifting the plates of power in the world. Mm. And when one looks at all of these factors together and we look at the foolishness and the absolutely unmitigated cray cray that we're seeing in certain sections. Now, of course, no, look, yeah. I love America and Americans and I've been to America many times, but the politics. <sighs> it's off the hook right now, especially. It really is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we can see that it, I'm not saying it's going to happen, mm -hmm. but that is part of the energetic potential mm -hmm. exactly. if, if certain people are not careful. And yeah. I can talk about banking if you want, or you can move on to something else if you wish. Well, if you have, if you have some insight on that, I mean, you, you've, you know, you've, you've made some really interesting points. And I know you have a, um, a, a recent video that's up about the the currency and will it yeah, will it change right. to the end right but um I, yeah what do you think just with the banking uh situation these banks that are going under do you think we're going to see more of that or do you think that we're going to curtail that or or can you see that in the astrology because again as you mentioned these are potentials and it's it's a you're perceiving you're reading what the planets are bringing to and it's and it's quite can be quite predictive but it, it it's a lens that we're we're it's looking at things through so what did, yeah. what are you seeing in terms of like this this new banking crisis ah <sighs> does it build it 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 depends it depends on certain factors the potentiality for a wider banking crisis is, of course, there. Yeah. Why? Because, of course, Pluto is in sidereal Capricorn. And, of course, Capricorn deals with not only government, but it deals with like things like banks, institutions of all mm -hmm. kinds, authority, big companies, pharma, et cetera, all that stuff. So by virtue of the fact Pluto just going through that sign can already show changes to financial systems, rules, regulations, and all that stuff, which is what is governed. However, Jupiter and Saturn both have a great deal to do with banking. Mm -hmm. And this is where we need to talk a little bit about Neptune. So I'm gesturing mm. to my map again. <laughs> and uh, to anyone look at this, this just looks like a colorful scattering of bits of paper <laughs> on, on a board, but it's more to it than that. What I want to draw your attention to is this is where the planets currently are by transit. So where I've got them on tracing paper, that's mm -hmm. where the planets are by transit. The ones that are illustrated on the paper are the USA's natal placements. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here the sun has now moved into sidereal Pisces and we're almost, almost about to begin spring because the spring equinox has moved backwards because that's where the stars go. In the West, we talk about Aries, but physically it's Pisces, yeah, mm -hmm. where spring starts now, because mm -hmm. the stars keep moving back. Now, Jupiter over here is currently in Pisces. Now, Jupiter is the co-ruler of Pisces, but Pisces is not the best sign for money. Yeah? <laughs> right. Yeah. Watery. Very watery, nebulous, yes, yeah, spiritual, a bit woo-woo. Now, look, we all love Pisces. Yeah, we all yeah. love Pisces. Um, so many of my clients are Pisces strong. And, you know, it's, it's empathy, yeah? Empathy, mm -hmm. intuition, talent, music, yeah? Mm -hmm. I think I, I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to, I can't remember your chart, Laura, off the top oh, of my head. But I think Music, Pisces Neptune, ne Neptune, yeah. Neptune. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. And ne Neptune is music in particular. And we'll talk about Neptune because this is huge. Mm -hmm. Neptune is the co-ruler of Pisces. Believe it or not, the outer planets can deal with opulent wealth. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is what I found. Neptunian wealth has a lot to do with the film industry, mm -hmm. music industry, mm -hmm. all of that stuff. So if we think of someone who's made a huge amount of their money from music and stuff like that, if we think of Dolly Parton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Now, I absolutely love Dolly. Yeah, I think yeah. she's one of the great oh, human fantastic. beings. Fantastic, yeah. yeah. Great she's songwriter. Of, she is fabulous songwriter, absurdly talented, mm -hmm. very gifted. Um, she's humble, but guess what? She's extraordinarily, in my opinion, Neptunian. Mm. Neptune is considered the higher octave of Venus. 
Mm-hmm. Oh. Venus is beauty, planet of the arts, etc. all that stuff. So I always say that Neptune is like Venus on opioids. You know? wow. <laughs> yeah. And Venus deals with everyday beauty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Venus is very much natural beauty, pretty much unadorned. You know, some of those people, they just need a little bit of mascara or they don't need makeup at all or whatever. And they, it, yeah. it just shines. Yep. In my opinion, Neptune is like RuPaul's Drag Race. Yeah, <laughs> yeah? Oh, it's yes. over the top. Yeah? yeah, it's a heightened. And when you think of <laughs> Dolly, yeah, yeah? She, she's she's naturally beautiful, yes. but it's this heightened over the top. And if you uh, right. forgive me a, a digression, I remember watching a documentary on her and she was she's walking down the street and there someone was asking her, how Dolly, how did you get your look? And she says, well, I was walking in town and I saw this woman that was real pretty. And I said to my mom, who's that woman over there? And she's like, oh, don't look at her. She's trash. And she's like, what do you mean she's trash? And, you know, she was saying that this lady was a streetwalker. Uh-huh. And Dolly was, and she said, at that point, she said, I thought she was so pretty. And ever since I wanted to look like trash. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> she based yeah. her look on the local, yeah. you know, yeah. from her own words. We know she's tremendously humble. But the point yeah. is, she has that Neptunian quality in bucket loads. And mm-hmm. so will you as well, Laura, because Neptune dissolves the boundary between the mm. physical world and the spiritual realms beyond. Mm. Mm-hmm. You will know this, but it's in, it may be preaching to the choir here, but it's very true. You cannot be a musician or have a gift or ear for music without sensitivity. It's mm-hmm. impossible. Mm-hmm. yeah it's impossible right. when a person writes a song or a score or the music comes to them well you know those people that are just ridiculously talented and they can play all the different uh, prince would be another good example oh. he was extremely neptunian brilliant yeah? yes got to see him in concert once upon a time mm-hmm. the word genius is overused but in his case mm-hmm. true oh yeah i've never seen anyone so gifted in my whole life and it was just something i'll never forget yeah but that's that neptunian that higher octave it gives Mm -hmm. that tremendous gifts for the arts music etc and stuff like that however how many times have we also seen an artist or some creative losing a fortune Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. or yep. sadly succumbing to drink and drugs and alcohol right. and illusions and delusions which mm-hmm. is also neptune yeah yes. yeah yeah so what's happening is something very important jupiter has been in um the sign of, of pisces for a while yeah he spends mm-hmm. about a year in each sign but guess what neptune so moved into Pisces sidereally on the 22nd of February mm-hmm. 2023. Mm-hmm. So now you have the planet of dissolving with the planet of one of the planets of finance. Mm. Uh, mm. Mm. What's been happening recently? Guess what as well? Neptune is what? God of the sea. Yeah, mm. he's the god of the sea. The moon is the queen of the tides, of course, but Neptune is the god of the sea. Pisces is his sign of co-rulership. Pisces also deals with the ocean. In one of my videos, I said, watch out, folks. I said, once Neptune moves into sidereal Pisces, we're going to hear lots of stories to do with the seas, water, all water-related events, hurricanes, you know, floodings, or, you know, this, that, and the other, but maybe even things positive with water as well definitely creativity and spirituality but what it is neptune is also expansive jupiter is also expansive yes. and they're both in pisces which means what uber duba oh. expansion <laughs> well. what has happened recently a big story with the sea we've mm. got this seaweed plume mm-hmm. that is as wide as america and some say even uh. bigger believable right right look at the timing yeah in western astrology and not to be bad to western astrologers Mm -hmm. but they're talking about neptune moving into aries yeah no he moved into sidereal pisces a few weeks ago 
22nd of February. Mm. It takes a little while. It's a slower moving planet. So it takes a little while for those new energies to form. But isn't it just a bit too much of a coincidence Mm. that now that he's moved in there, we're getting issues with finance and banking and issues with the sea being brought to our attention. Mm. Yeah. So we've got 14 years, folks, to sort it out. (laughs) Oh, wow. (laughs) All right. 14 years. Yeah. 14 years. Okay. That's good to know. (laughs) Well, Hogarth, let me ask you, um, as we, we kind of come back to the UK Mm -hmm. and am I correct in, am I remembering correctly that the lunar eclipse is happening in early May or am I, do I have that wrong? No, I think, no, I think you're right. You, You are right. Um, because the eclipses happen two weeks apart Okay. Solar eclipse and then lunar eclipse. And then there's normally another six months and you have the same thing happen again. Right. And because I, I seem to recall that King Charles's coronation is coinciding oh. with the lunar eclipse. And I just want to know if you have any comments. Well, <laughs> do, you know what? do you know what? I need, I need to look into that. And thanks for flagging that up. I'll tell you a funny thing. Yeah. And this will make you chuckle. The nodes of the moon, according to the ancient Vedas and stuff mm-hmm. like that, are also known as the kingmakers. Mm. Interesting. How funny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Many kings and uh, nobility are often born on eclipses. Yeah. I think the queen was born on an eclipse. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, uh, was Charles born on eclipse? I'll have to double check, but I think William and Harry, or definitely William was born on an eclipse mm-hmm. as well. So in a way, uh, it, it's kind of, in terms of the bigger arc, mm-hmm. it's kind of befitting um, that he should be coronated on, on eclipse. However, yeah. it does mean that, it means that when he's crowned, uh, and it, it, it can even just be in, in the week of that eclipse, but particularly if it's on the same day, it means when he's crowned, he's going to be crowned with the eclipse energy. Mm. Mm-hmm. And the eclipses are unpredictable. It right. can be wonderful, but they can also be a bit sketchy. So yeah. that's why it's not always wise. Necess- and what they used to do once upon a time, when they were eclipses, Mm-hmm. They would have someone else sit in place of the of the of the of the king, um, just so that the king wouldn't die, the king or queen wouldn't die, or something like that. So and- it's it's not necessarily the best omen. Mm-hmm. We'll have we'll have to see what happens, but it will. It's up there with the energy. It would make sense. Yeah, it just struck me when I heard it a, a while back, and I thought I'm going to ask Hogarth about that because <laughs> it yeah. just seems it to me. It just seemed a little ominous but i don't want it to be ominous but just with all of the you know there's just so much drama there already so i, I yeah. was curious could mean there could be something sudden there, it, there could yeah. be a shocking event or surprise that could happen mm-hmm. during the rain um yeah. unless they've deliberately uh, coordinated that it, it that way but i'm not sure if royalty use um, astrologers as much as they used to before, because they're a, an astrologer was always in the royal court for, right. and it's been that way for millennia, mm-hmm. but maybe not so much now. Maybe you should have asked, he should have asked me. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to give you a call. Well, anything else, any other predictions that you want to make here today or anything else that you think is important for us to know? Ah. I think the most important thing to know is that what America is experiencing and about to go through and is going through is something that happens to all nations Mm -hmm. at some point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If the nation gets old enough, that Pluto return comes. What I would say is, is to understand this is a time period of intense alchemy Mm -hmm. And as much as it may be difficult or even disturbing with what's going on, sorry, that's my phone there, let me just put on um, aeroplane mode. The important thing to understand is this is also a very good opportunity to develop, grasp, and utilize your X-Men powers. Mm -hmm. We've (laughs) talked about the shadow of Pluto, yeah? 
people trafficking, fascism, mm -hmm. manipulation, control, you know, pillage, murder, the whole shebang. Yeah, we know mm -hmm. that stuff. But mm -hmm. the higher vibrations are mea culpa, transformation, mm -hmm. turning lead into gold. When we lean into Pluto and when we stop making excuses, mm -hmm. when we face our shadow, don't try and destroy the shadow, but mm -hmm. integrate the shadow. Right. And when we take Persephone's journey, yeah, which is what mm -hmm. is happening for United States right now, mm -hmm. where we go into the underworld, where we have to deal with the issues that we face up, face there. But when we come up the other side, we can come with our crown mm. when we embrace when we integrate our pluto plutonian energies it is the most profound and extraordinary experience that any human being or nation can go through because what it means is is this when you have integrated your shadow truly and your shadow becomes your friend no one can ever lie to you again mm. It allows you to see through like x-ray vision, any shadow agenda, and yeah. any shadow agenda mm -hmm. in either yourself or in other people. Part of the big reason why there's so, so much woe and strife at the moment is because look at all the shadow agendas that are playing out from all sides of the yeah. fields. Yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. All sides of the fields. One of the things that, uh, uh, that I want to say is, is that America is one of the most gaslit nations on earth. We're all gaslit. Same yeah. with UK. Yeah. Look at yeah, all that yeah. Brexit stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that <laughs> pile of baloney. Yeah. <laughs> right. Now that everyone's finally wiped everything out of their eyes and just, and just gone, oh, oh, I guess it didn't work. Like, duh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. However, there was a lot of what? Manipulation, Facebook, and well, for entertainment purposes only, but let, we're only now becoming aware of the effect of, uh, of social media. Back then we were naive. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We didn't know. Yeah, we didn't know any better. And if you think of how close that vote was, there was less than 2% in it. Mm -hmm. Something that important should never be decided on that, but that's a side issue. Yeah. Now we're becoming what? More aware of agendas. Mm -hmm. So if we do that work within, where we face our shadows and integrate and learn from our traumas and also learn to, if we can, release traumas and forgive and develop and move on. If we all do that work collectively, it mm -hmm. will dissipate and integrate the shadow of everything. Yeah. But if we don't, what happens? We project. It gets projected outwards. So this is a time of magic mm -hmm. for America. Mm -hmm. But is it going to be the dark magic or the good magic that uh, wins? Yeah. Yeah. Will it be the orcs or the elves? <laughs> Yeah, and it really is because we, we we're just seeing you're seeing it's intensifying in, in in Western astrology. You know, they're 24 degrees ahead. They're talking yeah. about um, Pluto going into Aquarius, yeah, and they're attributing certain things to that. No, this is the beginning of of a process. The most intense will be the next three four years. Yeah. But it's also an opportunity, but everything has to be examined. Look at how everything is being dredged up from the deep, the banking, um, health, the diabetes crisis, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, yeah. the, the opioid uh, crisis. Yeah, Neptune also deals with opioids and all that stuff, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we might see more of that, people checking out, but we're also going to see spirituality organized religion is going to continue to disintegrate and mm -hmm. spirituality is going to come more to the fore animal welfare rights um the oceans the seas mm -hmm. there are there are positives but we must pluto is insisting the shadow work be done mm -hmm. for the whole world yeah. because capricorn is government yeah. but because it is pluto return for america plus saddie sati on the top 
Amazing. I mean, you guys yeah. really are nailed down to the train tracks here, and it's almost like, help, help me. Do, do, do you remember? You remember in Wacky <laughs> I remember Racing? that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit like that. Underdog so need... saves the day. <laughs> exactly. So we need someone, you know, but that saving the day is actually going to come from within yep. the person, within Americans. Yeah. Americans yep. have to, within themselves, do this alchemy where yeah. they also look at the past and how it's affected things to this day, mm -hmm. but it's going to take courage. Yeah. yeah. Persephone's journey is not an easy one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if it is done, then America can turn into the most extraordinary place on earth. The, the prize is worth, it's worth it. Mm -hmm. So let's hope that a lot yeah. of people, <laughs> wake up about certain things. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hogarth, it is always a pleasure. I love having you on the show. We'll have you back. There's more My to pleasure. talk about and, uh, and we will, we will see where these, these predictions go and um, we'll continue our conversation. And everyone, uh, there'll be a link to your site on our site, but it's Hogarth's Global Astrology. And I also want to give a plug uh, to your um, classes because you have Vedic astrology classes. And I think Hogarth does an excellent job of explaining Vedic astrology. And if you're interested in this, go check him out. Hogarth's Global Astrology on YouTube and also oh, you. .com, right? Yeah, yeah. So there's Hogarth Global uh, Hogarth Global Astrology dot com. I recently cha changed the changed the the name, uh, but it will still come up as the archetypal blueprint because I need okay. to change the ch um, change that. But I'm working on a whole new creative projects and stuff. I'm actually working on a type font right now. You may yeah. may not have seen this. I'll just quickly flash this. Yeah. So um, which is here we are. Look, yes, my own oh, calligraphy. Oops. Oops. Yes. Yeah, working Beautiful. on a new type font, and anyway, I've got videos. You're a designer. Of... You're a designer, and yeah, yeah. I went went to art school, and I'm designing this whole new book and everything like that. So, if anyone wants to learn with me, then of course they can click the join button on my uh, web uh, on my YouTube page, and they can go to my website for consultations. But thank you so much yes. uh, for having me. It's been a pleasure, and I hope I hope that was clear and concise for everyone to understand. Very helpful. Very helpful. And we will see you again soon. And we'll ask everyone Absolutely. to like, subscribe to the channel, put some comments, let us know. If you have more questions for Hogarth, and we'll, we'll have him back. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you.